Unfortunately, as of late, Prime Hydration is under quite a lot of fire. Didn't we drink some Prime in one of our videos? <laughs> we did. Well, we so did. Good. No one really seems to question him. They just think like, oh, Logan knows his shit. He's the owner of this big fucking company. Logan Paul, he's no stranger to controversy. Oh, shut up. Is Prime actually poisonous? Logan Paul responds to claims of Prime containing PFAS. Whoo! PFAS, you mean the chemicals linked to serious health complications like infertility, liver disease, and cancer? Chemicals that can last in our bodies for years and possibly forever in the environment? Jokes aside, these allegations have not been proven in court, but they do raise concerns about the chemicals in our everyday items and how they can impact our health. The law firm Milberg is suing Logan Paul because they claim that an independent third party tested the grape flavored prime energy drink and detected eight different PFAS. Eight. While this may seem like a lot, according to the US National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, 97% of Americans test positive for PFAS in their blood, and there are roughly 15,000 different PFASs. But why are there so many different PFAS, and why are they inside of me? PFAS, or per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are synthetic chemicals that can be used in fast food packaging and microwave popcorn bags or non stick utensils to protect food packaging from getting soggy from grease. Unfortunately, as a 2021 study warns us, they can directly contribute to dietary exposure through the migration into food, which can be a food safety concern. This is ridiculous. Great. So now I have another reason to feel guilty when ordering pizza. PFAS also make great emulsifiers, a necessary ingredient in many cosmetic products. It's no surprise that researchers in 2022 detected PFAS in every cosmetic product sampled in Canada. And since it's possible to absorb PFAS through our skin, that is to say dermal absorption, we're in trouble. Anyone else starting to feel like PFAS is like literally stalking them? Police believe this man is 48-year-old Robert Cessna, who's now charged with felony stalking. Cessna is an executive at 3M. You'll even find it lurking on your carpet, where it helps to protect furniture and carpets from stains. So yes, PFAS is the monster <laughs> under your bed. Over time, the PFAS coating comes off and gradually builds up in the dust that we breathe. And don't think for a second that skipping town will shake the dreaded PFAS. It's used in firefighting foam, designed to put out liquid-based fires like those started from gasoline and jet fuel, making them especially useful at airports and on ships. So yes, PFAS will follow you abroad. And through the widespread use of this type of firefighting foam, PFAS has infiltrated our groundwater, drinking water, soils, sediments receiving waters, and wildlife through the United States and globally, as stated in a 2020 review article. All right, I'm all for making sure things don't burn down, but let's not try to poison our drinking water while we're at it, especially since our best estimates suggest that the half-life of some PFAS in water is greater than 41 and greater than 92 years respectively, and it is possible that these compounds may never actually degrade under natural environmental conditions. And even though our drinking water goes through an extensive filtering process, PFAS has that dog in it, bro, and it just won't quit. According to their website, the Environmental Protection Agency's recommendation is using one of three tactics to remove as many PFOS and PFAS as possible. Activated carbon, ion exchange treatment, and reverse osmosis. Well, we do two out of the three of those to clean the state's water before it even becomes prime. While the majority of conventional treatment processes have shown to be ineffective in removing PFAS, as stated in a 2023 review article, osmosis, anion exchange, and granular activated carbon techniques have proven to be more effective. If this claim about PFOs and PFAs is true, what is that saying about your state water? This raises an important side note about socioeconomics. Water purification is often handled at the city or municipal level, meaning that some communities can afford things like expensive water filtration systems, while other less affluent communities, sometimes with higher proportions of people of color, simply cannot. In a 2023 study on PFAS and drinking water, Jared M. Liddy and colleagues summarized their results as community water systems contaminated with per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, 
PFAS, serve greater proportions of Hispanic, Latino, and non-Hispanic black populations, and contain greater numbers of PFAS sources within their watersheds. While this should promote discussion on how best to reduce disparities in access to clean drinking water, research in the USA suggests that PFAS levels in the blood of the general population does not differ by race as much as it does by biological sex, where in a 2023 study, author Nalisha Sonnenberg states, men were exposed to higher levels of all PFAS compared to women, meaning that us guys might be at a higher risk for the negative health effects of PFAS. What's a girl as bad as you doing in a Walmart? <laughs> but as I've outlined at length above, PFAS is lurking behind every freaking corner, where it'll eventually catch you slipping. Excuse me. Want some prime? Oh yeah. Hi. And if this was a fight, PFAS might as well be a UFC fighter with a 10 fight winning streak since it's going after every part of your body. So let's talk about that. From the hepatic or liver system as summarized by a 2021 review article where it causes changes to markers of liver health to the cardiovascular or heart system where it can cause high blood pressure in pregnant women. Look at part. this little bump here. You are to the endocrine or hormone system where it can possibly cause thyroid disease to the immune system where PFAS not only can it increase risk of asthma but also decrease our body's response to vaccines folks I'm not an immunologist, but put simply, after you get a vaccine, your body begins making proteins called antibodies that help train your immune system to fight off foreign threats. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's great. And frankly, the list goes on. PFAS joins the club of chemicals that can decrease fertility in both men and women. And they can even slightly decrease birth weight in children, which is an important indicator of a baby's health. Worse yet, the International Agency for Research on Cancer has labeled some PFAS as carcinogenic. Because what's a lesson on PFAS without cancer to top it all off? It's not fully clear how PFAS does so much damage, but we know from a 2022 review article that structurally PFAS resemble fatty acids. So PFAS mimics fatty acids kind of like how BPA pretends to be estrogen. Great. So now PFAS is a pro fighter and a master of disguise as well. But that's just the beginning of our trouble. The biggest problem is that PFAS do not undergo chemical reactions and are therefore not metabolized or biotransformed. Meaning that while PFAS is beating us up, the human body can't do anything to protect itself. So if you thought swallowing gum was bad, one bottle of Prime today could mean PFAS inside of you for 3.1 to 7.4 years. Though, admittedly, not all versions of PFAS last that long. The reason that PFAS is a forever chemical is because it's made of a chain of carbon atoms that are covered in fluorine atoms. And while fluorine probably makes you think about toothpaste, when it's in PFAS, it forms a bond so strong that not even the incredible human body, which is capable of smashing BPA to smithereens within six hours of exposure, can break it down. Knowing all of this, you're probably wondering what's being done to protect consumers from PFAS since it's starting to sound like a one-sided fight. In the early 2000s, mounting evidence on the negative impacts of PFAS on humans and the environment caused 3M, then a leading PFAS producer, to stop manufacturing and using PFOS and PFOA, two of the most common PFAS. Overall, the phase out by 3M has been largely successful as according to the US Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. Levels of these two PFAS have been decreasing in the general population. However, these same two PFAS were also allegedly detected in Prime, so maybe it wasn't as effective as we thought it was. In late 2022, the manufacturer 3M threw in the towel and announced that they were pulling out of the PFAS game altogether by 2025. So kind of like a fighter, leaving the USC in their Prime, the demand for PFAS remains high, and I'm sure another company will be excited to renew PFAs or PFAS's contract. And unlike BPA, PFAS can remain in our body and in the environment virtually forever. So even if every company stopped making PFAS tomorrow, we'd still be stuck with the PFAS we got right now for a very long time. <laughs>
While the medical and scientific community is still trying to understand the health effects of PFAS and how to manage them, in the meantime, it's up to us, the consumers, to make informed decisions about the products we use. It falls to us, the ordinary people, to prove that these chemicals are toxic before the chemical is regulated by our government. That is simply backwards. And as for Logan Paul and Prime, we'll have to wait and see if the allegations are true. But something tells me that this is one fight he may not be able to win. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave us a comment and give it a big thumbs up to feed the algorithm. And if you're already subscribed, make sure that YouTube didn't unsubscribe you from the channel. We are now on our way to 700,000 subs, so we don't want to lose any of you interns along the way. I read as many comments as I can, and we use your feedback to make our videos better for you. And don't forget to follow my other channel, Human 2.0 Fitness, for free right here on YouTube, where we share content that helps you move better and prevent injury. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.